نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اخوتي في الله اعلموا ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه كل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلاله في النار عن انس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال دخل علينا رمضان فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ان هذا الشهر قد حضركم انس بن مالك رضي الله عنه said that the month of Ramadan came in. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to the sahaba, إِنَّ هَذَا الشَّهْرَ قَدْ حَضَرَكُمْ وَفِيهِ لَيْلَةِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ الشَّهْرِ He said this month and the term for those brothers and sisters who understand Arabic, Al-Hudur Kinayat An Al-Ghurba, which means when you say someone came or someone stopped by or someone passed by, it feels like the person is not permanent. And the Messenger of Allah is saying to the Sahaba, in the Shah. Indeed, this month is guests. And usually the guests, they come and they leave. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in it there is a night that is better than a thousand months. And whosoever is deprived the khair of that night, فَقَدْ حُرِمَ الْخَيْرَ كُلَّهِ Whoever misses that night, then he misses the khayr tot. In totality, he misses all khayr. Now the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he once encouraged the Sahaba and allowed them to benefit from this month that comes in and immediately leaves. And he said, in that month there's a night and at the end of the hadith, قَالَ وَلَا يُحْرَمْ خَيْرُهَا إِلَّا مَحْرُومٌ And no one is deprived from the khayr of that night except the wicked ones. Except someone who is evil, who is really mahroom from all khayr. And subhanAllah, he's talking about Laylat al-Qadr. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stated in Surah al-Qadr, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي Laylat. So this hadith في سنن ابن ماجه وحسنه وصححه الألباني رحمه الله is a strong indication the importance of the month of Ramadan and how we should prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan and how we should treat this month as a guest that would come, approach and immediately leave and for those people who would miss the khair of that night 
are nothing but mahrumun, people who are deprived from khair. In Sunan Tirmi, in Sunan Ibn Majah, in another hadith also authenticated by Shaykh al Albani, Bisad al Hassan, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is very important hadith for all of us to know. He said, when it comes the first night of Ramadan, all the shayateen would be chained. Or the term, please state, the all shayateen. But he said, وَمَرَضَةِ الْجِنْ And certain types of jinn. Not all jinn would be chained on the day of the month of Ramadan. The shayateen is one category. Jinn is another category. And the jinn that is Muslim is a third category. But the jinn that is wicked, some of them called marada. And those type of the, of the jinn are chained with the shayateen. And then the Messenger of Allah continues, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala wa ughliqat abu fatihati abwaab al-sama wa abwaab al-jannah falam yukhlaq minha baab. And the gates of Jannah will all be open and that a single gate would be closed. And the gates of Jahannam would be closed, and that a single gate out of those gates would be open. And then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues saying, وَنَادَ munadi, And a caller would call, and he would say to everyone, يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلْ يَا بَاقِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلْ Oh, for the seeker, the seekers of the good, of good, come. And for those, and then he will say, oh, the seekers of evil, desist, stop. Discontinue whatever you have. Stop. وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَى مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَ And every night, every single night, Allah will free certain slaves from Jahannam. Let's say Allah yaj'alna minhum. Say Ameen ya ikhwa. Hatta nabkhal ala anfusara bin Ameen. Ajaban liqaw. That night, every night of Ramadan, Allah will free certain people from Jahannam. Every single night. Subhanallah. And if you really reflect on the purpose of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, it's not only for us to show that we're hungry or we're thirsty or to stop from drinking and eating, but the main one of the main purpose of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is to increase Iman and Taqwa. Allah is stated in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amunu kutiba, kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allakum Hayya ikhwan the purpose of Ramadan, one of the main purposes of Ramadan is that we should increase taqwa. And what I would ask the brothers and the sisters who are listening to this, that every night, the first night of Ramadan, you should check yourself. You should see the level of your Iman. And I know you may not be able to be exact the strength of your Iman, the level of your Taqwa, the level of your faith. But SubhanAllah, if you don't feel different by next day, if you don't feel that your life is changing, is shaping, is forming, you're becoming a different person, better person, then you must acknowledge and realize that you, for some reason, you're doing something wrong. Because the purpose of Ramadan is for us to increase in taqwa and iman. If your nafs is the same, if your khashya is the same, if your taqwa of Allah is the same, if your khaw, the fear of Allah is the same, then you must know and acknowledge that you're doing something that Allah is not pleased with. Perhaps you listen to music, and you're assuming music is not a great sin. Or you're assuming that it's okay to talk about others. And I'm not really backbiting that person. Rather, I'm just stating a fact. 
And the fact of the matter is, He is what I just described. And perhaps maybe you're missing Sunan, or you're missing Salat al Fajr in congregation, or you're doing, you're missing your portion of the Quran. You must learn and acknowledge that you're doing something incorrect. And that's why the level of your Iman is not increasing. That's why you are exactly the same person that you were yesterday. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَعَلَّكُمْ Perhaps that you may increase in taqwa. And the taqwa, ya ikhwati fi the best person that described taqwa, based on my limited reading, was Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu. And as we know in his extremely famous statement, he described the taqwa in four things. قال التقوى الخوف من الجليل والعمل بالتنزيل والرضا بالقليل والاستعداد ليوم الرحيم. Very concise, Subhanallah. Extremely concise, yet powerful. The whole taqwa that we are concerned about, that we're looking for, that we want to know about it. He said, Al-Khawfu min al jali That you must know and you must fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the khawf, ya ikhwati fi Allah, it's not the khawf, the fear that you fear, you know, a beast or authority or uh, something that will harm you. is a khawf that mixed with respect, mixed with hope and fear. This is a taqwa. Qala wal amal bit tanzil and I know when the month of Ramadan comes, this masahib will be worn out. Everybody want to read it, want to hold it, want to flip the page. And then he said, Radiyallahu anhu wa rida bin qalil and you can take whatever Allah gives you and be prepared for the day of Yawm al Qiyam. From the fada'il, ikhwati fi Allah, of the month of Ramadan, from the rewards, and then we will come to the conditions of Ramadan, they will come to the fada'il, I'm sorry, the surah of Adab Ramadan, and then who are also who are excused from Ramadan. From the fada'il of Ramadan, ya ikhwati fi Allah, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala man sama Ramadan imanu wa ihtisaba wa ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhabi. He said, whosoever fasts the month of Ramadan, iman, believing that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ihtisaba, hoping that you will be rewarded for what you did for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he said that person's sins would be forgiven. But ya ikhwati fi Allah, it's not the sin that we are consistent on doing it. The sins that will be forgiven are the sins that we may talk of. The sins that you want to do, some of the brothers, subhanAllah, they take break from all the ma'asi and they become what we know as Ramadan Yun. They worship the month of Ramadan. They let their beer grow, they stop smoking, they forget about music and they replace it with Quran. They do a lot of good deeds and their intention is to be good during this month but the after the month of Ramadan will come back to whatever we used to do. Now those people are not included here because this sin that he's a person is planning to go back is the sin that he is, did not make toba for. But the sin that we all make toba for, if you do it, then the person, his sins will be forgiven. All his previous sins would be forgiven bi idnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith come from Bukhari wa ghayri, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated and he said, qala inna fil jannati baba, يُقَالُ لَهُ الرَّيَّانِ He said, in Jannah, there is a gate called Ar-Rayyan. And in this gate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, where are the people who used to fast? And I feel jealous of the brothers and the sisters who are fasting today. Walhamdulillah, you know, I was so pleased to see the mystic folk. And I said to the brothers, 
is the masjid full this like this all the time and they say alhamdulillah but initially i thought you guys came for the food you know we know muslims mashallah we always go where the food is if there is a mashallah walima we pack the walima if there is a aqiqa we pack the aqiqa if there's a halaqa, <laughs> Allahu Akbar, inshallah. Inna Allah ghafoor rahim. So when I saw the condition of the mission, I thought, I said, Subhanallah, what is happening? They say today there's a iftar. And then I said, before I think evil of my brothers is the message this for all the time. They say, MashaAllah, through the week, the message is this full for glad tidings for the brothers and sisters who are always here and who are fasting today. Allah will say, or the caller will say to the people on the day of Yawm al Qiyam, Ayn al Sa'imun? Where are the people who used to fast? Where are they? But Kisomichiri, subhanAllah. And then those people will get up and they will enter from that door, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the, the door would be closed and no one else would enter through that door. No one else. It's a special gate for those people. In Sahih Muslim, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stated, and he said, for whatever son of Adam does in good deeds, for every hasana, bikulli hasanati asha, bikulli amal insali, qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, kullu amal, kullu amal ibn Adam yudha'afu al-hasanati bi asharati amthaliha. For every good deed, there will be 10 good deeds. Up to 700 deeds, except fasting, it is for Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward those people. Now, let's come to the fiqh aspect of Ramadan. There are four categories of people that Ramadan is wajib, is must on them. And I want the jama'ah to work with me and to count them all. Well, who is the first person? Out of, what are the conditions of Ramadan? Shurut al-Ramadan, or we call whom Ramadan is wajib on. There are four categories. First one is, the first condition is? Al-Islam. The first condition of Ramadan fasting is Al-Islam. If a non-Muslim fast or Munafiq fast, his Ramadan will not count. Second, Al-Bulur. So he reached the age of puberty. The age of puberty. But what about children? What about little children? Seven years old, six years old, five years old, eight years old. What should we do with them? Should we train them? Yes. The Sahaba of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahabiyat, they used to train their children and they used to make toys. They used to make toys for the children. And when they go and they cry for food, the mothers used to give these children these toys so they can play with. Now, children, according to us or according to them, children, or during the time of the Sahaba, they were completely different. See, Amr ibn As radiyallahu anhu, when he fathered his son, when he became father for his son, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, how old was he? 11 years old. The father was 11 years old. So nowadays, a child that's 11 years old, he is not a child, he's not a man, I'm sorry, he considered to be a child. He's a baby. His mother, sometimes they may, you know, brush their teeth put the pajamas on for them. They, you know, they cuddle them. They give them hug. They tuck them in the bed. They consider to be babies. But at the time of the Sahaba, they were men. 11 years old, Amr bin Az is a father. He has a son and he has a wife. So the Sahabiyat, when they say our children, they were talking about extremely younger than 11 years old. A child is, but us, we may not have the same children because we never trained them like the Sahaba, train their children. And we should treat them different as such because Ali ibn Abi Talib used to say, لا تقصروا أبناءكم على أخلاقكم فإنهم خلقوا لزمان غير زمانكم. 
He said, don't force your children to behave like you. Indeed, they are created for a for different time than your time. So we must acknowledge the difference between the kids at the time of the Sahaba and the children of our time. So the child here must be mine, maintained, based on his ability, but we should train them. Some of the mothers, what they used to do, they used to give their children late suhoor. What is late suhoor? Like 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, they would say, now eat your breakfast. You know, now is the time for your suhoor. Now you're not allowed to eat until iftar. And then with time, they will, you know, make the time short longer. So 9 o'clock for breakfast, 7 o'clock until the child is capable of fasting. What is the third one, Ikhwah? Naam? Al-Aql. He must be sane. If the person is insane, is not mentally fit, then that person is not that. طيب. And the fourth one? Al-Qudra is... أن يكون مقيما. That he must be resident. If he's a traveler, like my case, if I'm traveling during the month of Ramadan, based on my situation and ability, I don't have to fast. Of course, I have the Rusa. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala rufi' al-qalamu an thalath. He said the pen has been lifted over three of, of three people. Qala al-naim hatta yastayghid. The person who's asleep until he gets up. Qala was sabiyu hatta and hatta. And the child, until he reached the age of puberty, and the person who is insane until he becomes sane. طيب. When it comes to the hukum of al musafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرٍ He said, let the person Make up those days for the person who is ill or traveling, let him make up other days. The ulama rahimahumullah, they say for the person who is, who is a traveler, he has three options. If the fasting is going to harm him and it's difficult for him, and he may harm himself, then fasting becomes haram. If the person he is not is capable of fasting and he will not harm him, then it is encouraged for the person to fast. If a person is capable of fasting and he doesn't want to fast, then he's entitled to skip fasting and make up another day's be idni subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's come back to the conditions of Ramadan. Ramadan has only two conditions. Arkan Ramadan, Ar Ramadan lahu ruknay. Two conditions. Two pillars. I'm sorry, not conditions, two, two pillars. What is the difference between conditions and pillars? Or shart or rukm? What's the difference between shart and rukm? Now, for your ibadah to be accepted, you have to have the, you have to fulfill the condition. Now, it, it's true, but it's a different definition. But you're right. No, shart is the before you enter the deep. Excellent. The shart is what was outside of the shi. والركن ما كان في ماهية الشيء. الشرط is something prerequisite as the brother as the brother جزاه الله خير stated جزاك الله خير. Some like for example is wudu شرط or ركن؟ هاي يا إخوان. شرط. For salah there is no salah without wudu. So here ركن is something that is part of the act of worship. Now from the Arkan al-Siyam, we have only two. One, al-Niyya. Al-Niyya. Allah said, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ الْمُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم قال, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مِرِينَ مَا نَوَى So the first condition is a niyya. And the person should make his niyya before he sleeps, he should make his niyyah before he sleeps. Now, the question is, can I make one niyyah for the whole Ramadan? Or am I must, or I must make niyyah for every Ramadan, for every night? 
Like can I say the beginning of Ramadan or Allah my intention is to fast for the whole month of Ramadan? Or can I say, no, that is not Allah, I should make intention every single night and if I fast and I want to read the hadith to you before you answer and if before the day comes I should have that intention and if I miss the intention then my fasting is not, is not, it's not, it's not accepted. يَقُولُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَالْحَدِثِ فِي سُنَّ أَبِي دَعْوَةِ وَتِرْمُ صَحَعُ الْأَلْبَانِ يَقُولُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ مَنْ لَمْ يَجْمَعَ الصِّيَامَ قَبْلَ الْفَجْرِ فَلَا صِيَامَ لَهُ مَنْ لَمْ يَجْمَعَ الصِّيَامَ قَبْلَ الْفَجْرِ فَلَا صِيَامَ لَهُ is the person who does not make his intention before Salat al-Fajr, there is no siyam for that person. So what should we go? Should we say the beginning of Ramadan is sufficient? Or should we say every night I should have the intention of making, uh, the making the intention of fasting? Every, every night. Every night. Now, how is the khilafi, ya now, the brothers Jazallah is right. It's a difference of opinion. Some of the ulama they say rahimahumullah based on this hadith. Based on this hadith, man lam yajma' siyam qabl al fajr fala siyam la that indicates that there is no siyam for that person. That's it. If the sun rises, there's no siyam for that person. Another person said, well, to counter that hadith, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many authentic ahadith, he used to come to his family, to his wives, and he used to say, kunna, do you have anything that I can eat? And the women and their wives, his wives would say, no. And then he would go to the next wife and he said, do you have anything? And she would say, no. And then he would say, Eden, for inni sa'im. Then I am fasting. I am fasting. They said, well, that hadith only applies for nafl, or sunnah. Nafl is applicable. But when it comes to far, no. Good number of ulama of Ahl al-Hadith, ulama of the Salaf, they offer the opinion that it's permissible to make, it's recommended for you to have that intention every night is well and acceptable. I'm trying to reconcile the two, the two opinions. It's acceptable. But the best if you do, I'm sorry, the best thing is for you to, to, to restate your intention every night. But it is acceptable for you to say at the beginning of Ramadan, my intention is to fast for the whole Ramadan. And that is easy for the people. It's easy for the Muslimin to say, Alhamdulillah, my intention is to fast. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said there's no need when it comes to near for salah, near for other things, there is no need for you to renew your intention if you knew your intention from the beginning. From the beginning. And that is the acceptable. Both of them, if you take this opinion, alhamdulillah, if you take that opinion, alhamdulillah, but the acceptable opinion is, to me, for what I read, if you say from the beginning of Ramadan, I well, start my intention, inshallah, to fast for the rest, for the whole of one month of Ramadan, is acceptable bi idnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, the niya, should we announce it, pronounce it out loud, or should we just say it in our heart? As we know, the niya fil qalb. Madam al-Shafi'i, I know a lot of Somalis are here, you know, you know I hope they're not, you know, fanatic Shafi'is. The madam al-Shafi'i, we know, now you have to say you need Allah for a lot of things, but the correct opinion, inshallah, is the niyyah should be set in your heart. You have that in your heart, and then inshallah, your niyyah is acceptable. The second thing, or second rukun, al-imsak. 
abstaining from eating and drinking and anything that was halal from, for you, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, كُلُوا وَشَرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ خَيْطُ أَبْيَطُ مِنَ الْخَيْطُ الْأَسْوَى It's a week. <coughs> we eat and drink until we see the difference between the white and the black, which means the sunrise or the dawn. So it means the dawn. We'll go over the things that breaks your fast very quick and then you can allow some questions. For one of the things that breaks your fast, one of the first thing, of course, anything that you eat and anything that you drink. Unless the person forgets. Unless the person forgets. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من نسي وهو صائم فأكل أو شيء He said whoever eats or drinks Forgetting that he's fasting, قَالَ فَلْيُتِمَّ الصَّوْمَةِ Let him complete his psalm. فَإِنَّمَا أَطْعَمَهُ اللَّهُ وَسَقَى Indeed, Allah provided food and drink for that person. My question to you is, if during the month of Ramadan, if you see Brother Saeed drinking nice cold rum, cold water, and say, Bismillah, should you stop me? وَرْكَضَبْكُ إِجْوَجِي or should you say, no, Allah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, innama Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided food and drink, so let him eat and drink. What would you say? Stop. Huh? You say stop. <laughs> would you stop? So you stop with me what Allah provided for me. Is that what he's saying? Allah, yani rizqun saqahu Allah ilayya. Allah gave me a rizq. And then you say stop. The best they said, the ulama rahimahumullah, is to remind your brother. And this is from min bab al-amru bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar. To remind your brother is acceptable, and this is one of the things that we should do. But the th second thing that breaks your fast is throwing up or vomiting. I like. And this is if. As the brother stated, Zalakhir, purposely. Not, if, let's say it's a lot of us, alhamdulillah, we eat suhoor like there is no tomorrow. We eat suhoor like we're gonna die if we don't our, you know, overeat tonight. And we eat from iftar to suhoor, walillah, alhamdulillah. And then you come for Salat al Fajr, after Salat al Fajr, with the rukur, you feel like you're vomiting. You rush into the washroom, you vomit, your fast is still good. But if you purpose try to make yourself vomit, then here is when you have to repeat your fasting. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, hadith, and this is authentic hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qal man dhara'ahu al-qay, falaysa alayhi qadha. He said, if vomit, Overtakes you, there is no qawa. You don't have to repeat that. Woman is taqaba, the person who purposely vomits, qala afam is amdan He let that person repeat his fasting. So this is the difference. Now, if you purposely do it because you ate too much or for whatever reason, then you have to redo it. But otherwise, there is no need for you to redo it. Number three. Usually for women, if a sister, you know, experience or comes to that time of the month, or if she has or delivers or in the labor and delivers a child, then of course that will break her fat. Also, um, what we know like al istimna, al istimna, and this is when a person purposely try to al istikhraj al mani. And the person is trying to, I don't know how to explain, but I hope you all understand. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> so inshallah, that is also, if a person has wet dream, then it's fine. Just take a ghusl to the janabah. But if a person does because uh, he, he get closer to his wife and he knows that cannot control his, himself, then this person also is under the same hukum that will break his fasting. None of the things 
that has kafala, everything is just a making up the day that you miss. But the only thing that has kafala is the kafala if a man has relationship with his wife. If he has relationship with his wife, then this is the kafara. And the kafara, ikhwati fillah, is to free slave. If you have no slave, to fast 60 days. If you cannot fast 60 days, to feed 60 people. And this is the kafara of, for what you did. يقول أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه قال بينما نحن جلوس عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذ جاءه الرجل سواء ويسن with the messenger of Allah a man came to the messenger of Allah فقال يا رسول الله يا أو messenger of Allah I'm destroyed I'm doomed قال ما إذا what's wrong with you قال وقعت على مرأتي he say I have relation I have relationship with my wife وأنا صائم ولم فاسم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم وهل تجد رقبة Do you find a slave that you free? تعتقها تعتقها قال لا He say no قال فهل تستطيع أن تصوم شهرين متتابعين Can you fast two months continuously? The man said no A messenger of Allah In another narration he said Ya Rasool Allah The reason I'm struggling Is because I couldn't handle one day And you want me to handle two months يعني تقي الله فيا then he said, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَهَلْ تَجِدْ إِطْعَامَ سِتِينَ مِسْكِينَ Can you feed 60 people? The man said, قَالَ فَمَكَثَ النَّبِي صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَا سَلَمْ فَبَيْنَمَا نَحْنُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ I said, the Messenger of Allah kept quiet, and while we were in that situation, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a date as a sadaqah was brought to the Messenger of Allah. Then the Messenger of Allah said, Where is the questioner? The man who, has a, who had questions, where is he? So he came for Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khudh hadha fatasaddaq bih. He said, Take this and give sadaqah as a kafara for what you did. Faqala al rajul, Ala afqara minni, Ya Rasulullah, on someone who is more poor than I, or Messenger of Allah, Fawallahi ma bayna la batayha. I, in between the two mountains, Ahla Baytin Afqar min Ahli Bayt. He said, There is no one between these two mountains more in need than I or my family. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he smiled and he said, Now go and give it to your family, feed your family. And the man left. Let us go quickly over the etiquettes of fasting. Everything that we talked about was halal and haram. But now it's fadai, the adab of fasting. First of the etiquette of fasting is suhoor. And when I say etiquette, I mean it's not wajib, it's not must, it's something that is highly recommended. If you do it, you will be rewarded. If you skip it, you will not be punished for. So the Messenger of Allah, he said, Tasahharu fa inna fi suhoori barakah. He say each suhoor indeed there is barakah in suhoor in eating suhoor. And the best the thing best thing to do for suhoor is to delay the suhoor, not to eat it or not to have it immediately after salat al taraweeh, but to delay in a deep lord liga suhoor that is preferable. That is the sunnah. يقول أنس عن زيد بن ثابت رضي الله عنه قال تسحرنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم قام إلى الصلاة. he said we ate suhoor with the messenger of Allah and then he went for salah. قلت I said to him كم كان بين الآذان والسحور how much what was the difference how much time between the آذان I'm sorry the سحور and the آذان because he's telling us he had suhoor with the Messenger of Allah and then he went to the Salah as though the time was very short. So he asked, how long was the time, the period between the Adhan and the suhoor? قَالَ قَدْرَ خَمْسِينَ آيَةً Time that you can read 50 ayat. So it was just before Salah, before the Adhan of Fajr. It was not way, you know, just be after Isha, but very close to Salat al-Fajr. Now, and suhoor, like subhanAllah, based on your culture, suhoor is not necessarily the way we eat culturally. Like, I don't know about, but Somali culture, we eat berries, hilin, 
باستو اسكو دح كاريس لحوح سبايل هبا كما تغنو فو السحور ما شاء الله we go all the way we don't leave anything behind you know for some other groups they don't eat much they don't eat much one of the Pakistani brothers Jazallah khair he invited me for suhoor and I thought mashallah I'm gonna have baris and hilib and like uh, Somalis and he gave me an orange so I ate the orange because I was waiting I'm waiting for suhoor <laughs> I ate as I walk up see you know just advertisers <laughs> warming up for suhoor and then he says, Sheikh, would you like some water? I said, after the suhoor, inshallah. <laughs> he said, there's no suhoor, this is it. <laughs> I said, Portugal, ya hayya, He said, just an orange? He said, you should eat light. I said, I'll invite you next time to my house. <laughs> so the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala tasahharu wa lo bijir'atina. And he said, make suhoor even with a sip of water. Just bismillah. That's enough. You don't have to drink a lot, you don't have to eat a lot. For you to do this much, you gain the barak. You gain the barak. Second thing from the sunan, ta'jil al-iftar. That you do, you make iftar as early as possible. Don't delay. Some of the people, what they do, they wait until the adhan is completely done. They say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So they wait until it says, La ilaha illallah. And especially if you're listening to Egyptian Mu'addin or Syrian Mu'addin, that's five minute min min minimum. Adhan and iftar time had nothing to do with one another. Iftar is tied to sunset. Adhan is tied to the ability or the time that the person has that moment. You could call 10 minutes or 5 minutes after the sunset, you could call the Adhan. But if thought is linked with the time, with the sunset, it has nothing to do with the Adhan. You don't have to hear the Adhan from the Masjid or from the Imam. And it is best thing, as soon as you hear the Adhan, or as soon as you know the sun, Alhamdulillah, is completed, so, so then you just, this is the time that you should eat your thought. As the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, قَالَ لَا يَزَالُ النَّاسُ بِخَيْرِ مَا عَدْتُ الْفِطْحْنَا He said, people are in good state as long as they are doing iftar as early as possible. What time is Isha, ikhwati fi Allah? 11 o'clock. So, the third thing that we should do, ikhwati fi Allah, that we should talk, we stop, اللَّهُ and this is not adab, this is one of the things that we should try to train ourselves to stop talking vain talk. Allah, vain talk. Unnecessary talk. Useless talk. And we always, when we talk and talk and talk, and sometimes we talk things about things, uh, about things that has no relevance in our lives. Sometimes we talk about the, the American policy. Oh, why? How come you know this this government of this state did not do this? How come Mursi did, did this or did that? You know, Alhamdulillah, our heart goes for Mursi. May Allah protect the Muslims in Egypt and everywhere else. But the reality is, we should always try to keep our tongue engaged in something that is useful, not necessarily things that we want to talk about. And some people they want to create a conversation by saying, "Well, how is the weather?" What do you think about the weather? An unnecessary conversation. During the month of Ramadan, learn to control your tongue. And if someone insults you, as the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if someone insults you, just tell that person, I am fasting. And walk away from that person and do not do anything to that person or I retaliate. This is what I have to say, inshallah. We'll leave 10 minutes for Adhan and question and answer and wudu. If you have any question, Inshallah, you can raise your hand and then ask the question be even in subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hopefully concerning the month of Ramadan. No. I'd like to ask you a question uh, regarding uh, the people that fast during the day and stand up in prayer during the night. There are some Muslims who don't fast from smoking. They smoke outside the masjid as soon as the iftar is done or just before suhoor. What is your advice to these people? 
The brother is saying, what is your advice to the brothers who fast during Ramadan, alhamdulillah, <coughs> but they go and they smoke right after the iftar. Smoke is a balwa, it's fitna. It's a very difficult habit to get rid of. And I would say the brothers, for those brothers who do smoke, number one, if you're not already uh, acknowledge and realize, you must understand that cigarette smoking, uh, cigarette is haram. And for you, alhamdulillah, to stay away from haram thing all day long for the sake of Allah, and as soon as you break your fat, doing haram things, then you must know something is wrong there. Because one of the signs that Allah accepted your good deed is that you follow good deed with another good deed. But if you do a good deed and you follow with the bad deed, the ulama, they say that is a sign that Allah did not accept your good deed. So be careful with that. Be careful with that because you're doing something that is haram and you're following fasting, which is one of the best of ibadat. So you are doing something haram. Second, I do acknowledge, and you do acknowledge, it's very difficult habit to get rid of it. And I know you may not be, you have, may not have the willpower to do it overnight. If you don't have that, then put a plan for yourself. Say, inshallah, I'm gonna, you know, stop, try to stop and decrease the number of cigarettes that I smoke a day. And inshallah, work towards that. May Allah subhanahu wa taala help you. Jazakumullah khair. Now. now <laughs> You're talking about for suhoor? Yeah. For suhoor, if you're eating something or if you're drinking something and you hear the adhan, you can finish. Like let's say I'm drinking water. Not this much, but you know. And the adhan is calling. It's fine. You should finish based on the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's permissible for you to finish. But you don't go to the kitchen after the Adan is called and start making meal for yourself. That is, would be unacceptable. And it has nothing to do with the sun, it has something to do with the dawn. When the dawn, when you see the difference between you know, dark and, and, and light, this is a time that you should stop. If you cannot see that due to uh, cloud or the weather, then you base on the schedule that you have, the calendar that you have. Shaykh ibn Uthameen rahimahullah said, if you off you know, a minute or two, it's fine. If you off a minute or two, it's fine. But you should try to you know, stick to that, bi'idhnillah. No. Uh, Shaykh, regarding suhoor, uh, some mosques right now, they pray 1.30, uh, the, uh, the azan for fajr is about 2 o'clock. Uh, on the timetable, some mosques is about half to two forty-five, things like that. So in Ramadan, people are being a bit picky and choosing. Like, what is the correct? Do you have to carry with your local mosque? Do you have to carry with the late one? So, at the moment, people like the latest <coughs> one, but in Ramadan, obviously, like the right, one. right. The brother is saying for iftar or for the time for fajr, different masajid they have different calendars. Some of them two o'clock. Some of them 2.30, am I right? Yes. So which one should I follow? We both, we know all this is based on calculation. Each masjid or each group, they use a different calculation. So so you don't get confused, I would say. Just whatever masjid that you go to, just follow that masjid. Just stick to that masjid. If they do 2 o'clock, alhamdulillah, that is the best. If they do 2.30, I would say to just to be on the safe side, do two, but if you do two thirty, saying this is was done by scholars, what was done by people who know, who know what they're doing, then inshallah, you're fasting. So, so stick to a message, the local message now. No. Um, in terms of breastfeeding, when the, the child is in its early stages, for example, a month or something, and the productivity of milk might reduce, should the person fast or not? There is an author. There's a statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas. Saying that if a mother is suckling her child or she's pregnant, she you know she should not fast or she can skip fasting. His fatwa, of course, the fatwa of Ibn Abbas عنه, was she doesn't have to fast, she should give video. She considered to be amongst those people who are very old, 
all those people who have permanent illness. But the, the correct statement, even though Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, I rather follow the statement of Ibn Uthaymeen, even though there's no comparison between the Sahabi and the Alim of our time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرْ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامٍ so if the person is traveling, is ill, and the ulama consider the mother who is suckling her child or pregnant, and she's, she fears for herself or her child, they categorize her under the category of those who are ill, then she should make up those days and she not only give pity. This is what I would say, insha'Allah, even though Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu had a different fatwa, and Ibn Fati Karbani al-Bani, Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah. Is there a sign for the Laylatul Qadr? There is a sign that night you can refer. Is, is there a sign for Laylatul Qadr? Yes, unfortunately, but it's too late. No, you. what I'm saying is like, you will only know that happened after the fact. Because you will know the further of Laylatul Qadr. You know, the sun, that is how the sun rises, the radiance of the sun, and the more, that morning is completely different morning. Completely different morning. But during the night, Leading to Fajr, you won't be able to. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came out of his room to tell the Sahaba exact the same night. And two of the Sahaba were fighting over something. And I think it was Abu Musa al Ash'ari al Mu'adh bin al Jabal. And then the Messenger of Allah said, Because of so and so, and the, the argument that happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed that knowledge for me. So, you know, look for in the last 10 days of Ramadan. It's one night, one night, and this night, alhamdulillah, Allah did not put in a whole month, but in only 10 days. And then subhanAllah, he narrowed it down and say, on odd nights. So, you have 21st, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 5 nights. We should dedicate 5 nights of our lives, at least, it's not the 10th. For that night, at least, it should be the ten. Should be our life should be dedicated for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But at least, if you don't want to do the whole month, you don't want to do the whole ten days. At least those five nights, just be in the masjid, from sun, from fajr, from sorry, from maghrib till fajr. Just do the dua and do the ibadah. But again, it's tawfiq min Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I think it's time for other. All the time is coming ten o'clock. Yeah, yeah. One more question, inshallah. <laughs> What do you waste time on? He said that back home people used to pronounce the intention and say no way to so I you know and to add the intention of fasting the month of Ramadan and they still do for salat and for all salawat. As I stated, there's fasting and those people's fasting, alhamdulillah, I hope inshallah is good because they only doing this because based on what they know of the deen, alhamdulillah, may Allah reward them for sticking to what they know but the fasting is right and acceptable inshallah is good but they left which is better which is keeping to yourself and having it in your heart inshallah